Praise and peace to you from God the Creator and our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Gracious and eternal God, look with mercy on this your family, for which our Lord Jesus Christ was content to be betrayed and given up into the hands of sinners, and to suffer death upon the cross, who is alive and glorified with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, welcome to this, our Good Friday service, and once again, it is indeed a privilege to be able to connect with one another in this way. I do hope that you are all well. If that should not be the case, then please don't hesitate to give me a call. You can message me or a WhatsApp. Um, doesn't matter. What is important as is that we do get in touch with one another. And so welcome to our Good Friday service. To remember, as if we were there on that day, Jesus' death and burial, so that we may once again learn to trust Jesus in all circumstances. Let us pray. Let us bow our heads in prayer. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you. To you, O God, we sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. And so throughout the world, as the church, we acclaim you. You, Lord Jesus Christ, you the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father, you took our flesh to set us free and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Lord, in your steadfast love and infinite in your mercy, you welcome sinners and invite them to be your guests. And so we confess our sins trusting in you to forgive us. We have yielded to temptation and sinned. We have turned from our neighbours in their need. We have resisted your word in our hearts. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and keep us in life eternal. Amen. In his foreword to a book by Thomas Merton, the author wrote, In an old-fashioned theatre, there were often three or four fire curtains with lively scenes painted on them. At intervals before the play began, these painted curtains were lifted one after another. As a member of the audience, I was never quite sure whether it was still another painted curtain or the play itself that was before me. But finally the last curtain lifted, and now there was nothing between me and the actors themselves. Friends, on the day Jesus was sentenced, died, and his lifeless body placed in the tomb, there were many people weaving, as it were, their way in and out of the events of that day. Maybe we can say that in our own ordinary everyday living as followers of Jesus, we too may find ourselves weaving our way in and out of the events of that day. Jesus wants us to be with Him. There are times when we are close to Him. There are times when there is nothing between us and Jesus, when we can see the play itself as it were. And then there are times when we find ourselves more on the fringes, a little distant from Jesus. And what is between us and Jesus are fire curtains. Fire curtains are nothing but layers of protection we put up to stop us from being 
with Jesus or being close to Jesus. And so today, on this day of Jesus' death and burial, I want us to have a closer look on how we can, as we weave our way in and out of the events of this day, how we can be closer to Jesus. For He wants us to be close to Him. He wants to be close to us. Our scripture reading for today is rather a lengthy reading. We're going to read from John chapter 18 verse 1 to the end of chapter 19. So chapters 18 and 19, 19 in John's Gospel. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples across the Kidron Valley where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, procuring a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priest and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to befall him, came forward and said to them, Who do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. 
Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word which he had spoken. Of those who you gave me, I lost not one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which the Father has given me? So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the, of the Jews seized Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had given counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. As this disciple was known to the high priest, he entered the court of the high priest along with Jesus, while Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out and spoke to the maid who kept the door and brought Peter in. The maid who kept the door said to Peter, Are not you also one of this man's disciples? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple, where all Jews come together. I have said nothing secretly. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, bear witness to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? And us then send him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They said to him, Are not you also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a kinsman of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it, and at once the cock crowed. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas. It was early. They themselves did not enter the praetorium, so that they might not be defiled, but might eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not an evil doer, we would not have handed him over. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. This was to fulfill the word which Jesus had spoken, to show by what death he was to die. Pilate entered again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priest have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingship is not of this world. If my kingship were of this world, my servants would fight, that I might not be handed over to the Jews, but my kingship is not from the world. Pilate said to him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? 
After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no crime in him, but you have a custom that I should release one man for you at Passover. Will you have me release for you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. And then chapter 19, Pilate took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no crime in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priest and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no crime in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by that law he ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard these words, he was the more afraid. He entered again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to Jesus, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore he who delivered me to you has the greater sin. Upon this Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king sets himself against Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of his skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote a title and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this title, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The chief priest of the Jews then said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and made four parts, one for each soldier, one for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was without seam, woven from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture. They parted my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did this. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother, and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved, standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her, to his own home. After this Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said, To fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A bowl full of vinegar stood there, so they put a sponge full of the vinegar on hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, in order to prevent the bodies from remaining on the cross on the Sabbath, 
The Jews asked Pilate that their legs may, might be broken and they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true and he knows that he tells the truth that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not a bone of him shall be broken. And again another scripture says, They shall look on him whom they have pierced. After this Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who had at first come to him by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes about a hundred pounds weight. They took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, tomb where no one had ever been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, as the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. And just so far in God's word for today, and we thank God for God's word. Amen. On this day, faced with Jesus' death and burial, as we find ourselves in and out of the events of that day, we come to know who Jesus is, or Jesus being who he is on this day. Here Jesus is the rejected one. Jesus is the suffering one. Jesus is the one who is abandoned. Jesus is the lonely. Jesus is the unloved. Jesus is the abused. Jesus is the poor. Jesus is the powerless. Jesus is the weak. There is a close connection between who Jesus is on this day and our own deepest desire for God to be present in our lives. For Jesus, being who He is on this day, is the Jesus who meets with us where we are, wherever that may be. But like Peter, we too can deny Jesus or can deny that we know who Jesus is on this day. Denial is one of those fire curtains we put up to protect ourselves from being too close or being with Jesus. Just like Peter in the face of tragedy, in the face of Jesus being absent, in the face of evil winning the day. We look for the other Jesus. The Jesus who not so long ago calmed the storm. The Jesus who not so long ago raised Lazarus from the dead. The Jesus who not so long ago pro boldly proclaimed that he is the bread of life. That in him there is life. In looking for the other Jesus, we deny what we know or we deny the Jesus we know on this day of Jesus' death and burial. And in doing so, we deny this close connectedness between who Jesus is here on this day and our own deepest longings, our own deepest desire to have God being present in our lives. But Jesus, being who He is here on this day, remains here, remains who He is on this day. For only in this way can Jesus be with us, 
Can Jesus be close to us, even when evil wins the day? Friends, join with me in prayer. Let us then pray for the Church of God throughout the world. We pray for the Church in South Africa. We pray, Lord, that during this time of, of trouble, that as your Church, we may find ways to minister to your people, to be there for them, and to continue to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. We pray for those who have power and influence, and for all those who govern the nations of this world. We pray, Lord, for wisdom, for courage. We pray, Lord, that they may do what is right and search after justice. We pray for the powerless. We pray for all victims of famine and war. We pray for all who strive for justice and peace. We pray, Lord, for the afflicted and sorrowful and for all who are in need of our prayers. Eternal God, through the self-offering of your Son, you have filled our lives with your presence. Help us in our sufferings and trials and strengthen us in our weakness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. On this day, all we have before us is Jesus' death and burial. In a sense, there is indeed no good news. The only good news here is that Jesus is who He is. Jesus being who He is. Yet here on this day, Jesus wants to be with us. Jesus wants us to be or to see the play itself as it were. Jesus wants us to, to be with him, having overcome all the fire curtains that we may have put up, stopping us from being close to him. He wants us to let go of denying who he is on this day. He wants us to let go of the fear stopping us from being with him in protest against evil. He wants us to lift the fire curtains so that there is nothing between him and us, so that we are with him on this day. Because he knows if we can do it on this day, if we can be with him, be who, be with who he is on this day, then nothing can stand between us and him on the day of his resurrection. That nothing can stand between us and the victory he has won for us on the day of his resurrection. Today we find ourselves in and out of the events of the day of Jesus' death and burial. But Sunday, the day of His victory, is coming. Amen. Was a life filled with aimless desperation Without hope walked the shell of the man Then a hand with a nail print stretched downward Just one touch, then a new life
I will praise Him forever and ever For the cross made the difference for me Barren walls echoed harshness and anger Little faces ran in tears to hide Now those walls ring with love, warmth and laughter Since the giver of life moved inside And the old rugged cross made the difference in a life bound for heartache and defeat I will praise Him forever and ever For the cross made the difference for me There's a room filled with sand faces without hope death has wrapped them in gloom but at the sight of a saint there's rejoicing for life can't be sealed in a cross made the difference in a life bound for heartache and defeat. I will praise Him forever and ever for the cross made It is the, the custom of, uh, of our church to, on this day, make a financial offering to the training of ministers. Now, under the circumstances, that is simply not possible. But I do want to encourage you to, if you should want to, to do so, to make a deposit into our bank account, our members will have our bank account details. It is available on our website. Um, look under notices. You will find it there. To, to make a, a donation, simply add as your reference ministerial training or training of ministers. And we will put that money aside as we usually do on this day every year for the training of ministers. Just to remind you that as a church we are dependent on our Sunday offerings. But under the circumstances, again, that is not possible. But want to encourage you to not stop giving. I know that there are many people who may um, not be able to do so because of the lockdown. And I want to say to you, uh, that's fine. If you can't uh, add or if you can't uh, make an offering, if you can't deposit something into the bank account, that is okay. But there are those who can do so. And I appeal to you to not stop giving. Um, it is important that we keep on giving even though we are not able to meet on Sunday mornings. As a congregation, we are dependent on your giving on Sundays to keep the church open as it were. And so, friends, want to encourage you to, to think about this and for those who can, to, uh, if you're not already doing so, I think most of our people are actually already giving, but for those who may want to consider or to reevaluate or to rethink this, to find our banking details on our website and to continue to give. 
and may I then express a word of, of thanks to, to all who are giving so generously so that we may continue this work. And so friends, thank you for having been with us today, for tuning in to our Good Friday service, and I'm looking forward to meet again with you tomorrow on Saturday afternoon at 3, and then our Easter Sunday service on Sunday morning at 8. God bless and take care.